you're going to turn those in at the end. I'm just going to go through them and grade them. So if you attempted, you'll get credit. Okay, so A was something like H, H, then what, CH3, OH, OH, and CH3? Is that the one I gave you to start out with? Yeah. Okay. All right, so give me a B. What would molecule B look like? An H on the bottom, CH3 on the left. And OH on the right side. Okay. And on the bottom I had OH on both sides of the And I had CH3. Okay. I had the other. So that's the same. I was looking at the different one. That's fine. So let's switch the CH3 and the OH in each case. So OH here, CH3 here, CH3 here, and OH there. Okay. And what's the relationship between those two molecules? They're enantiomers. They are non-superimposable mirror image isomers, and so those two are enantiomers. Okay. So that means C is going to be a diastereomer to A and B. So what did somebody have for the ones that weren't A or B? What do you have? Okay. Okay. So both the CH3s and the OH are on the same side. And then what's D going to look like? D is going to look like the mirror image. Like so. Um, how about chiral centers for A with the CH3 on the left and then the bottom CH3 on the right? What did, some, what did you have for the chiral center RRS for the top one? R? Do we all agree? Bottom? This one? R. Okay. Everybody agree with all those? Okay. So the relationship between A and B are that they're enantiomers. The relationship between A and C and B and C or We'll leave it at that for the moment. Those are diastereomers. What are they? They are non-superimposable, non-mirror image isomers. Now, the question is, what are C and D? What are they? So they are meso compounds. Are they mirror images? Yes. Are they superimposable? Yes. How are they superimposable? Take this molecule and rotate it 180 degrees in the plane of the screen, and you will end up with the CH3s on the left, the OH is on the right, and an H and an H here. Now, the critical part is if I rotated that molecule like this, the bolds are still bold. If I rotated 
if there's my bold and I rotate this way, then the bolts become dashed and you can't align them. So I'm rotating that in the plane of the paper plane of the screen plane of the board, whatever you want to say. And so in this case, those C and D are the same. They are superimposable. Okay, so then we have to define, they are meso compounds. What does it mean to be a meso compound? What it means is that you are superimposable on your mirror image. But what do meso compounds have that most molecules that are superimposable on their mirror image don't have? So they're superimposable, but they have two, two chiral centers. So meso compounds are compounds that have two or more chiral carbons or chiral centers and are superimposable on their mirror image. An antiomerous can have two or more chiral centers, but they aren't superimposable on their mirror image. So this is a new type of stereochemistry relationship, meso. Now, what else do meso compounds have? So this would be like the basic definition of meso. Two or more chiral centers, and they're superimposable on their mirror image. There's another way to classify meso compounds in terms of their characteristics. They have more than one, they have more than one chiral center, but then what else do they have? That. It's called an in, yeah, it's an internal mirror plane of symmetry. So the mirror plane of symmetry cuts the molecule in half so that the left, or so that in this case the top and the bottom are exactly the same. And I don't have to mess around with rotating or anything like that if I cut the molecule in half. So they have to have this internal mirror plane of symmetry. Any object that has an internal mirror plane of symmetry will always overall be superimposable on its mirror image. But the thing with the mirror plane of symmetry is it can go through, chi through carbons. It cannot go through carbons like this case where it's just going through a bond. Could go through carbons but any time a mirror plane of symmetry goes through a carbon, that carbon cannot be chiral. So if the mirror plane of symmetry cuts through a carbon, that carbon is not chiral. And we already know, hopefully, that chiral carbons, or sorry, non-chiral carbons, what's their characteristic? They have at least two groups that are the same. So whenever a carbon has two groups that are the same, it's not chiral. But also a, car a carbon that has a mere plane of symmetry through it isn't going to be chiral either. Okay. So C and D are the same compound, which is why last week when I said a 2n was a maximum number of chiral center or maximum number of stereo isomers, 2 to the n. In this case, I have two chiral centers, but only three stereo isomers because 2 to the n would be 4, but that's the maximum number. Anytime you have a meso compound, it'll have one less. Does that make sense? So, are we saying that A and C and D and C are the only ones that are the 
Dice well, because I'm saying C equals D, so there's no sense in saying A and D are diastereomers because D is C. So it's like D doesn't even exist. Because C and D are the same compound and it's meso. I'm going to call that the same meso compound. As opposed to the same compound that's not meso. They're the same. Enantiomers must be non-superimposable mirror image isomers. These are superimposable, and so they are not enantiomers. All right? So, meso compounds. I'm going to give you four of these structures. So I'm going to give you molecule A, B, C, and D. And the question is, is it meso? bless you, or not meso. So the game is, is it meso or is it not meso? So what I'm going to do is go ahead and work on those four. And then I'm going to ask you with your plicker cards whether you think it's meso or not meso, and we're going to go through them one at a time. Okay, so if you want to work on them individually, check with a neighbor, want to work with them with a the neighbor, doesn't matter to me. We're going to go through each one. Is it meso or is it not meso? This is the one place where the where the R and the S configurations actually break.
So you have to remember the basic definition of meso. What does it have? It's got to have chiral centers and a beer plane. To be meso. If it's missing either one of those, Two, you can discuss, you can compare, probably end up doing that anyway. Everybody have answers for all four? You don't have to say that. <laughs> this is supposed to be exciting and fun. Okay. All right, so question A. So A, is it Meso A, not meso B. Um, oops. Wait, what do you. There. It's a lot of carts for these little spades. All right, I have 31 to 3. 31 meso, 3 not meso. We agree? Okay. Now, does it have chiral centers? Yes. What's attached to this carbon right here? An OH, an H, a CH2, and a C that's not a CH2. And so, therefore, it's got four groups. This one has four groups. Mirror plane asymmetry? Yes. How? Horizontally. Okay, great. That's number one. B. What do you think B is? Meso or not meso? 
You might as well keep the cards out because we're going to use them for all four, at least. Okay, we got 32. Well, what if it was an OH? Did that change the answer? No. Okay, we've got 32 no mesos and three mesos. Chiral centers? Yes. Mirror plane of symmetry? No. That same mirror plane of symmetry doesn't work because the OH is up and the OH is down. Okay, so far so good. That is correct. A is meso and B is not. C. Meso, not meso. If your card is directly below or directly behind somebody's, I can't see it. Just saying. Mm. We have 15 and 21. So, you know what that means? One minute discussion, then we'll re vote. Okay, let's go ahead and revote based on your discussion. Meso or not meso after you've had your discussion? Okay, we move to 30 not meso and 5 meso. Interesting. Okay. Let's do D. Let's do D. D, meso, not meso. Okay, we need another minute discussion about D. And then we'll have a revote. Okay, time to revoke. 
Time to revote on D based on your discussion. Miso, not miso for D. Okay, we move to eight to twenty eight. All right, let's, let's do D. Let's look at D. Okay, so does, no, not going not gonna to do that. Let me ask, let me ask this question since we have it's not meso. And I will, I will accept the answer that D is not meso. But what I would like to know is I would like to know why it's not meso. So let me give you, two, let me give you a choice. It has no chiral carbons. Or B, no mirror plane. C, both of those are true, or D, it's meso. So why, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have said it was not meso, because that biases the results, but it's not. So what? So why? Does it not have chiral carbons? Does it not have an internal mirror plane of symmetry? Does it not have both of those? Why is it not meso? Okay, interesting. So 30 to 4 to 1. Somebody's really sticking with the it's meso. <laughs> No, sorry. Nobody stuck to its meso. Both. So the overwhelming answer is that there's no chiral carbons. Why not? Two of the groups are the same. True. Why else aren't there any chiral carbons? Define the middle. Um, that's what I wrote down. <laughs> mirror plane of symmetry cuts in the middle means not like like in between. What did you just say? We talked about it um, being in between two problems. So where do you want to pass the mirror plane through? Define the middle. Here. Define the middle. Okay. Is that a legitimate mirror plane? Yeah, it is. It's a mirror plane. Is that the only mirror plane in the molecule? No? Where do you want to draw the other one? Diagonally. Diagonally. <laughs> 
Let's talk about that one for a minute. Um, so let me get rid of the first one. The first one is legitimate mirror plane. Let's see what this one is. Um, this one, so in this case, folding through the mirror plane, here's what would happen. This OH right here, if you fold it through the mirror plane, that OH would have to go here, and this OH would have to go here. So actually, that mirror that is not a mirror plane because it doesn't cut the molecule completely in half. So in this case, the mirror plane that's in that direction has to go through has to go through the bond, not the atoms. So one mirror plane, second mirror plane. Our question. Like that? Why don't you like that one? Yeah. You can cut through a cent you can cut through an atom and cut it in half. The left hand and the right hand would be the same. So you're allowed to cut through atoms. So that would be like cutting through an OH like that, which would be okay. You could even, you could even cut through a CH2, CH3, like that, and that would still be a mirror plane. Um, well, because the left and the right half didn't match up. So in other words, let me cut, let me just, let me do that. OH, OH, okay, and, and this was the mirror plane you wanted. So let me over here draw out, draw that mirror plane, but now I'm going to just put this side. Okay, so where does the OH go when it cuts through this mirror plane? It's going to go there. There's not here. Right? So that mirror plane, the mirror plane would generate a different molecule, would gen generate a different half. So that one, that one's not a mirror, that, that's not a mirror plane for, that mo for this molecule. But going back here, yeah, I can pass a mirror plane through the C's and the OH's. So what does that mean? Anytime a mirror plane of symmetry cuts through a carbon, that carbon is not chiral. So are these two chiral carbons? No, they're not. So is that the reason why 31 of you said that there were no chiral carbons in the molecule because of that mirror plane? No? So why did you say that those two carbons were not chiral if you didn't use the mirror plane? Okay. Two of the groups are the same. Now I'm gonna make sure that we that we're on the same page here. What's the number one group here? Number four. Okay, now we gotta determine two and three, right? So CH two, CH two. Same. Are we done? No. I need to go CH, I need to look at those. So now I've got two more CH2. Same. Are we done? No. We got to come down here to this. And when we come here to this group, what happens? It's the same group. So this entire group is the same as this entire group. 
And so that's another reason why the, those two carbons, because you do the same thing with the bottom carbon, right? That's the reason why those two carbons are not chiral. But it's kind of a circular argument, because if two groups are the same, the, it's going to automatically have a mere plane of symmetry through it. So whether you use the mere plane of symmetry or you use the four group test, you get the same answer. They didn't believe me this morning, so I said, okay, tell me whether it's R or S. And we were up to, what were we, we were at? You could choose the left hand or the right hand to be two or three, so they just made it two and a half. Yeah. Each of them two and a half. And I said, okay, they're the same. That's okay. I expect these. I expect the wide variety of answers here because this is kind of hard when you first see it. So the idea here is that D is not meso. I mean, D D is not anything, really, because it doesn't have chiral centers. It's just a molecule without chiral centers. C. Oh, wait. Is everybody okay with D? Because now i got to go back to C. Anybody want to re-vote on C? Or are you stuck with, are you with your final answer? You good with your final answer? Okay. What is C? One of the five people who said C is meso, give me a reason why the C is meso. Be brave. Well, it has an airplane symmetry. Okay. Where is the, where is the mirror plane of symmetry? It's you already know. <laughs> This is probably a disadvantage to being in the front row and, and answering the question that way. But trust me, if you're in the back row. Oh, I did not draw that right. You're good. I'm sorry. No, nope, you're good. If you're in the back row, you're still coming up to draw it if you offer. Not like, like that. Do we like that? Is that a mere plane of symmetry? Yes, it is. It's perfectly legitimate mere plane of symmetry. As a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, it is the only mere plane of symmetry in that molecule. So, okay, number one has a mere plane of symmetry. Does it have chiral centers? Okay. HOH. Different. CH2 versus CH2. Same, but let's continue on. CH2 versus not CH2. So they now, so that carbon has four different groups, as does the other. So, what does that mean? This has a mere plane of symmetry and chiral carbon. So, what is it? It's meso. Now, I know where the point of confusion is. The point of confusion was that you like the mirror plane cutting through carbons and the mirror plane cutting through these two carbons. Guess what? Those two carbons are not chiral. But were they ever chiral? Because they had two hydrogens attached to them, the CH2s can never be chiral carbons. So just because it has a mirror plane, if that mirror plane cuts through carbons, those carbons aren't chiral, but in this case, they weren't the chiral carbons to begin with. But in D, what were they? They were the chiral carbons. Okay. So those two criteria have to be fulfilled for a molecule to be meso. But the plane, mirror plane could go through bonds, it could go through carbons, but any carbons it goes through 
are not chiral. And in D, if it goes through the carbons you thought were chiral, they ain't chiral anymore. They never were. Okay? You can always use the four group test to determine whether something is chiral or not. It's got to have four different groups. Okay, so for Wednesday, um, there are videos in today's folder. There's a video on how to determine RNS for chairs, Fishers, and Newmans. Um, I would like you to take a look at that because you're going to need to do that to do these problems. You're going to need to. Um, look at that. The first page is RNS problems. The second page is an antimers, diastereomers, same but not meso, same meso compound. So we can, so on Wednesday if you want to ask questions about that, but I uh, would like to start on chapter 7 on, on Wednesday. So I updated the pages in Canvas all the way through to Monday. Um, so if you get a chance to, I would like you to read through, um, read through the book or watch the videos for Wednesday on SM2 reactions. Um, the solvent stuff we may have to talk about in class, good solvents, good nucleophiles, etc. Um, and then we can talk about the other things for the problems. If you have any questions though, feel free to put them on Piazza. Somebody asked about problem 7, 16 or something like that. I will post a video answer to that. And that's something we'll talk about on Wednesday. So any of those, send them to me by email. Post them on Piazza. I will answer them by the end of the day. Um, but Wednesday we'll start on SN2s. And then we, if we have some time, we can go back and sort of mop these kinds of problems up. Okay, so that's, so the problems, these problems are due with the Scantron form on next Monday.